to hear from the public. Uh, because they were shuffled in this manner, we're going to start with uh, Susan Jordan, uh, Director of California Coastal Protection Network, followed by uh, Kelly Borgman, representing herself, and Joe, uh, I think it's Gruner, representing the Surfrider Foundation. If the three of you could uh, line up, uh, we'll try to move through this in some expeditious fashion. Thank you very much. I almost don't know where to start um, in response to Mr. Sheehy's uh, statements, uh, given how misleading they are. Um, and first of all, I think I would like to enter into the record letters from over 30, well, 35 environmental groups expressing concern about this project and its enforceability and in outright opposition to this power grab by the governor and the Department of Finance. So let us back up because once this commission denied this project, numerous environmental groups who had been in support of this in concept expressed concern and solidarity with this commission. To not make that point clear to the people in this audience is a deliberate misrepresentation of the facts. We cannot get away from the fact that this is the first new offshore oil lease in 40 years. And if I sound upset, it's because I am. I have never seen such a blatant power grab by a governor to override a an independent commission's authority. It is absolutely uncalled for. If you really want the money that bad, this project should go back to the State Lands Commission. You don't have the right to unilaterally take control. That's why we have an independent board and commission. This is Susan Jordan of the California Coastal Protection Network. And 35 groups in this state object to what you're doing, including, I am sure you will hear from, Linda Kropp of the Environmental Defense Center, who you know very clearly sent a letter to the governor and to you objecting to this move. So I think in total, to be honest with the public and the legislature, you need to take your myth and fact sheet that you just distributed via press release and correct it because it is false and misleading. So in closing, I'm going to calm down. That's a good idea. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I guess it's very hard to watch someone who's supposed to have the trust of the people of this state so deliberately mislead them and distort the facts. And I frankly think you owe the people of this state an apology. Going back to the commission, I want to thank you very much for your deliberations on this project. It was very controversial. It was very hard for everybody to, to look at this proposal and come to their own conclusions, and we didn't all agree. That was very, very hard. But your staff and the commission that voted on it I believe made the right decision. If this project is to move forward, it needs to come back to this commission. The problems with enforceability need to be addressed and resolved. That is the appropriate process, not an end run about around the commission's authority. Thank you very much. Okay, the next one I think I just uh, pronounced the name. It's uh, Borgs Borgsman. Is that closer? Brosman. Kelly, oh, okay, I got it. Kelly Brosman. Yes, you're up. Kelly, my apologies. Yes, yes. Fine, very good. Thank you very much. Fine, very good. Very good. Ms. Brosman. Thank you very much, My State apologies Controller. for uh, mispronouncing your name. It's all right. My yes. inability to read. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Just over 100 days ago, President Obama pledged that his election marked a new era of responsibility, when America would once and for all roll back the specter of a warming planet and bring about new age, a new age powered by clean energy and green jobs. With that in mind, one has to wonder why Governor Schwarzenegger would think it appropriate to initiate the first offshore oil drilling leases in California in over 40 years. 
For those who do not recall, on January 29, 1969, a massive oil spill from a Platform A off the coast of Santa Barbara created an environmental nightmare, the likes of which California has never experienced. According to the Santa Barbara Wildlife Care Network, the animals that depended upon the sea were hit the hardest. Incoming tides brought the corpses of dead seals and dolphins. Oil clogged the blowholes of dolphins, causing massive lung hemorrhages. Animals that had ingested the oil were poisoned, and in the months that followed, gray whales migrating to their breeding ground in Baja avoided the channel, their main route south. Thousands of birds were estimated to have died because of contact with the oil. Witnesses recall a stench that wafted into their neighborhoods, drawing concerned residents to the beaches, where they were met with a shockingly silent black ocean, thick with oil, an apocalyptic landscape of ecological destruction. Since that tragic day in 1969, California strengthened its resolve to reduce and eliminate drilling off of its coast. In 1994, the California legislature passed the California Sanctuary Act that generally prohibited new leasing off the coast and gave this commission the absolute discretion and authority to deny any new lease application on the simple finding that it was not in the best interest of the state of California. Thus, on January 29, 2009, this commission rightfully denied the application of the Plains Exploration and Production Company for the first new oil lease in state waters since that infamous day. In the face of mounting calls to drill, baby drill, it was a courageous decision that you should be most proud of. Kelly, moments, and uh, just hold for a few moments, if you would, please. Okay, we have a quorum, and um, <laughs> Kelly, uh, would you please continue? Thank you. Uh, I wanted to say that uh, I thought that your decision was courage courageous and one that you should be most proud of. Um, and as soon as your commission had acted, Governor Schwarzenegger surprisingly retreated to a back room and concocted a deal behind closed doors that was designed to usurp your authority and unilaterally authorize the Department of Finance to approve PXP's lease. One minute, the governor loudly proclaims that he is opposed to any new offshore drilling in California, and the next he uses fear tactics and the cloak of our economic crisis to hold a fire sale on our coastal resources. Ladies and gentlemen, he can't have it both ways. Ironically, the governor's plan comes at a time when the Obama administration and Congress are shaking loose from the failed energy policies of the Bush administration and are working to pass comprehensive clean energy legislation introduced by Waxman and Congressman Markey that will reduce our dependence on fossil fuels and move us toward a clean energy future. My husband, Pierce, and I wish to applaud this commission for making the right decision in denying the PXP lease. We agree with you that the supposed benefits promised by this oil company and their partners do not justify the benefits promised. And the increased near and long-term risks to our coastline, our marine wildlife, and our coastal dependent economy we urge you to pass the resolution that is before you and send a clear message to the governor and the state legislature that our precious coast is not for sale at any price. I thank you for your time. Well, thank you very much.